Hey Geek Girl World, Christine here and welcome to my first film review. So since it's my first review, I am open to constructive criticism, but make it constructive, like don't be a dick. Uh, I'm open to suggestions if there's anything you want to see more of, anything you want to see less of, what I could call this, because Christine's film reviews isn't really that exciting. So yeah, just let me know in the comments. So the first film that I'm reviewing is called Goat, and it stars Ben Schnetzer, I think that's how you say it, from Warcraft, and Nick Jonas from basically everything. It's directed by Andrew Neal. So the synopsis of the movie is Ben's character, called Brad, uh, has a really traumatic experience at the beginning of the movie and decides to go to college with his brother, played by Nick, named Brett, I think. Uh, decides to go to college with him and pledge to a fraternity. So my spoiler free two cents is this movie was not made for me, which is fine because not every movie is going to cater to my audience. Um, I know nothing about the college lifestyle and this is what that whole movie is about. Uh, I didn't go to a university. I went to a photography school that was like 20 minutes away from my parents' house, so I never went away to college. I know nothing about frats and sororities, and I still don't really know what rushing means, like, even after I saw this movie. And, like, I don't understand- why are they all Greek letters? Like, I'm sure that's something, like, that I should know as an adult, why sororities and fraternities are all called, like, Greek numbers and letters. Maybe not numbers. Just letters. It's just letters. But I feel like if I had a sorority, I would call it something like the Goon Squad or something like that. But I don't know. I don't have a sorority, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Anyway, it's... the film is reminiscent of, like, Spring Breakers in that it's that exaggerated college experience. I mean, at least I hope it's exaggerated, because if that's what really happens in colleges, parents don't let your kids go to college, because that is terrifying. Like, ugh. I was mortified most of this movie. I'm not gonna actually give the movie like a grade or a rating until the very end of this review, because I could say something in this review that would completely change my own mind about it, like one way or another. So I'm not gonna say the grade until the end, but I will grade it. Straight out of the gate, I'm gonna call Nick Jonas and Ben Schnetzer's characters, I'm probably butchering his last name. I'm gonna call their name, their characters something different because Ben is called Brad and Nick is called Brett, which are essentially the same name. Call me crazy, but that'll get really confusing. So I'm gonna call Ben Warcraft and I'm gonna call Nick Bronus. I think that'll keep things from being super duper confusing for everybody. The movie opens with like a homoerotic slow motion shot of just shirtless bros yelling at something. I'm assuming pledges. Okay. Very artsy. The story actually starts with Bronus throwing a party and inviting his brother Warcraft to come because it was going to be where all of like his cool college friends were going to be and he wanted, you know, Warcraft to make some friends. So in case you guys were wondering, Nick Jonas is not with Disney Channel anymore. And that point is driven home in the first like 10 minutes when he shotguns a beer, snorts cocaine, and knows a woman biblically. He's shedding that good guy image. I mean, technically it's been gone for a while, but like this really drove it home for me because I haven't watched uh, Kingdom yet, which I really want to, but I know that that's pretty edgy. So Bronus has a creepy buddy named Chet, or Chance, Chaz, maybe? I don't know, but he's got like a CH name. But his buddy is like, he, he likes watching women make out without their shirts on. That's another point in this movie. Basically no women. 
There's like one girl character who Warcraft briefly likes and I think makes out with her a little bit and she's like the only one who has many speaking lines and there may be like three lines or so. Not a lot of women in this. Keep that in mind before you go see it. Anyway, back to the synopsis. So Warcraft decides that the party's not really his scene and leaves or goes to leave. But as he's getting into his car, this like hooded figure comes out of the shadows and is like, hey man, I was at that party, but I really need to go to my place. It's like right up the road. Can you give me a ride? And Warcraft is kind of like, sure, whatever, fine. So we'll call this guy Thing One. So Thing One disappears for a second and goes to get Thing Two. So now Warcraft has to drive two guys somewhere. But he doesn't know these guys, and he doesn't recognize them, but they claim they were at the party. So he's like, all right, fine, I'm innocent, let's do this. So after a little while of driving, uh, Warcraft is like, okay, you said it was just up the road. So Thing One is like, yeah, man, it is. Is this like a super big deal? And Warcraft is like, no, no, it's totally fine. I'll drive you to Miami, wherever you need to go. So this progresses and it starts getting like more and more awkward. Like Thing Two is in the back seat, just like leering in the rear view mirror. And he has like surprisingly beautiful eyes, which I thought was an interesting touch. But anyway, it gets like more and more awkward and Warcraft realizes like, crap, something bad is happening. This is not a good situation. But it's too late because he already has these guys in his car. He should have thought of that before he said, yeah, strangers, come into my car. You're definitely going to outnumber me, but you know, whatever, I'm nice. So anyway, thing one and thing two lead him down this dirt road and make him get out of the car and beat the crap out of him. Like basically leave him for dead, steal his car, and just he just is left down in the woods on this dirt road, and he finds his way back. But that is like the inciting incident for all of this. Warcraft experiences this really terrifying thing, and I guess that makes him feel like less manly. So he decides to leave to go to college with Bronus, and Bronus is really protective of Warcraft, but he's also a bro, so like he kind of has to save face and sort of be a dick to his brother, which is kind of crappy. At least that's what happens in the beginning. So anyway, Warcraft gets to college and his roommate is this delicate, fragile man-child who I'm gonna call Puppy because honestly I don't remember his name, but he's so sweet and delicate and innocent and I don't know, he was just really sweet. I liked Puppy. But anyway, both of them decided to pledge to this fraternity that Bronus is in. Couldn't tell you what it was called, I don't remember. We'll call it Greek Letters. The fraternity is called Greek Letters. That's, we'll just leave it at that because I don't remember specifically the letters. So Puppy and Warcraft decide to pledge to Bronus and Cherry, I don't, I still, I just don't know his name. I don't remember. It might have been Chance. It was Chance. His name is Chance. Oh my gosh. I remember. I'm a genius. Okay, so anyway, they decide to pledge to this fraternity, which I guess entails being abused a lot. Holy crap, what the heck? Like, why is Hell Week a thing? I thought people went to college to learn, not get beaten up. Because, like, during Hell Week, there's like a bunch of different pledges. Puppy and Warcraft are t just two of them. There's like a handful, and I guess that that's a thing. So what they do is they like put you through a hell to see like what people will want to come out the other side or what people do come out the other side and end up like strong enough to be in their frat, in their bro club. So these kids had to drink gallons upon gallons of liquor, like have it, have it force fed to them by the like already frat bros, like the guys who are already in on all this crap. They had to be force fed alcohol, they had to eat really weird and gross stuff. At some point Warcraft had to eat a banana out of the toilet, but he thought it was crap because he was blindfolded, like ugh, that's so gross! Ugh. They had to get peed on, or at least Puppy got peed on because he threw up some of the 
like gallons of liquor that he drank, he threw up and the bros were like, oh, that's dumb, and locked him in a cage and they peed on him. Why? Why is this a thing? It's so bad. I don't understand. But anyway, Bronus is starting to feel like all this stuff is wrong. As Hell Week progresses, Bronus is like, I don't really like what is happening here. He doesn't say that out loud, he just kind of slowly starts to drift away, and at some points when they're doing really bad things to the pledges, he just leaves. It's like an Irish goodbye. He just takes off and is gone for like a couple scenes, and we're like, okay, bye, Bronus, I guess. Um, but anyway, he sort of starts to distance himself from that group because he doesn't think that it's right. Sort of what really pushes him over the edge is when all the bros take the pledges to like, I don't know, the woods or something, and they have this goat. The titular goat. Anyway, they have this goat and they say, or they tell the pledges, if you don't finish this warm keg of beer in, I think, three hours, you all have to fornicate with this goat. Ugh. Like, what? Why? I just, It doesn't, like, actually happen. The, the pledges, like, finish the beer and, like, they were more just threatened with that, but, like, Ew, why? Like, why would you even threaten somebody with something like that? Don't be weird. College kids are weird, okay? You're all weird. So, Puppy gets picked on a lot by Chaz. Chance, sorry, Chance, it's Chance. My bad. Chance and this other, like, big bro, who I'm just gonna call Big Bro because, like, I don't remember his name. He gets picked on a lot by them. Oh yeah, sorry, at some point in all of this, uh, James Franco shows up for like five minutes and is basically just like a has-been bro impression of Alien from Spring Breakers. Like, just over the top and weird. But like, he's not a bro anymore, he's like older, but like misses the bro lifestyle. But he's literally only there for like five minutes, and then he's gone. And I don't remember if you see him again. You might see him one more time. But in all, he's not there very long, but he gets like a pretty high up credit, which is very confusing. I mean, he's James Franco, so I get it. Puppy is picked on a lot by Chance and Big Bro, and it kind of all comes to a head when Warcraft comes to the, the frat house and sees like a couple of the pledges and Puppy being like pelted with rotten fruits and vegetables by Chaz, and I think Big Bro is there too. Chaz is hitting them, and he's hitting Puppy a lot, and Puppy ends up getting hit so hard that I think he gets knocked out, and so Warcraft is really pissed off. He's like, this isn't good, you guys are jerks, bleh. Anyway, at some point, like just before this, Warcraft goes to Bronus and is like, hey, why are you not around a lot? Like, why have you been kind of blowing this whole thing off? And Bronus is like, because it means nothing. Thank you, Bronus. It means nothing. Go to college, get an education, get a degree, and then go get a job. Don't beat the crap out of your classmates. That's weird. But Bronus gets it. And he also says to Warcraft, I don't think you belong here. Like, you, you don't belong here. And in the beginning, Bronus was trying to, like, give him tough love and be like, you know, all the guys are gonna pick on you, they're all gonna, like, they're not gonna believe in you, like, I know that this thing happened to you, but you need to, like, nut up, essentially, is what Bronus was saying. And at some point, he helped Warcraft, like, while he was being beaten, because he realized, like, holy crap, he's gonna start having, like, a PTSD attack right here. So he helped him up and, like, got him out of there. But he was basically like, you can't be a pansy. Like, you have to just do it. But I think he starts to change his tune as he sees all the stuff that they're doing to these kids. And that's good. Like, he's the voice of reason. Praise be to Nick Jonas for being the voice of reason in all this chaos. It was like, ugh. Anyway, so 
they make it through Hell Week, but they're still, like, abused by the bros. Like, I think they, like, get into the fraternity, but they're still, like, on a trial period or maybe something like that. Um, so they still get abused and stuff, and at some point, Puppy goes to work out and play soccer, because that's what he does, and he's running on the track, and, like, we watch him run on the track for a little while, and he collapses and dies. He had a heart attack. Why? Like, Puppy was so sweet, and he was Warcraft's friend, and, ah, uh, it was so sad. And so Warcraft is, like, devastated, and all the bros go to the funeral, and, like, Chance is all like, we're so sorry that this happened, dude, and Big Bro, and, like, everybody's super nice to Warcraft, when Warcraft is like, you guys are full of crap, like, you're the reason for this. Like, you put him through too much stress, and his heart gave out. So, the guidance counselor starts calling in guys from the frat to get information, because, evidently, which isn't something we find out till like after all the hazing. Hazing is not allowed at that school and in that fraternity, but they do it anyway. But they do it like behind the scenes and don't advertise it and don't let anyone know because if they knew, then the frat would get shut down and they'd probably all be suspended and stuff like that. But anyway, Warcraft goes into the guidance counselor's office and the guidance counselor starts questioning him and is like, you know, has there been hazing? And Warcraft tries to play it cool and is like, yeah, I mean, like, not a lot. Like, it's not really that big of a deal. When, like, yeah, it's totally, it's totally that big of a deal. Um, so anyway, he leaves the guidance counselor's office and I don't know if, like, a day or two progresses, but he runs into a bro. I don't remember which bro. And the bro is like, hey, did you hear that, like, the frat is getting closed down? And Warcraft is like, oh, why? And he was like, because somebody squealed on us. And Warcraft is like, well, I don't know who did that. Anyway, Warcraft gets to his dorm room, opens the door, and there is the goat in his dorm room. And it says something on it like, like, effing rat or something. I don't, I don't remember exactly what it says, but the, it's painted on the goat. And the bros have given the goat a laxative, or a whole box of laxatives, so it's just taken a dump literally in every corner of Warcraft's dorm room. So Warcraft gets pretty, you know, angry, as angry as Warcraft can get, and he takes the goat and goes to the frat house and confronts Chance, and Chance is like, you squealed on us, you're no friend of ours, you're a jerk, you need to get out of here, and then Bronus comes into the room and is like, no, he didn't do it. I did. I told on you guys. And then Chance and Bronus get in a fist fight, and then Bronus wins because he's Nick Jonas and he's super strong and super cool and super hot. I'm sorry, I'm getting off I'm getting off topic. Anyway, Bronus wins and Warcraft and Bronus leave. Like they just leave. I missed a part. An important factor. See, it's a very busy movie. Throughout all of this. Warcraft has been getting phone calls from the police asking him to come in to possibly identify one of the guys who jumped him. But he keeps saying no. We'll get into why that frustrates me after I'm done giving the synopsis, but just remember that. But anyway, Bronus and Warcraft leave school and go back home. And Warcraft goes with Bronus to the police station and looks at a lineup of the guys, and we see Thing 2 in the lineup because his beautiful eyes are there, but Warcraft lets him go. He says, no, I don't recognize any of them, and it's just like, nah, he's not there. So then Bronus and Warcraft get back into the car, and Bronus is like, did you let one of those guys off? And like they start crying together, and then it ends with Warcraft walking out into the field near where he got jumped. That's how it ends. Like, nothing is solved. So this is where we get into my actual review of it. That was more just like a synopsis summary with spoilers, I guess. But anyway, I didn't care for it because it wasn't for me, which I already mentioned before. I don't think it was a bad movie. 
I just didn't care about Warcraft that much. I don't think his story was that compelling. He never really tried to better himself. He never tried to fix the situation. He just kept, like, abusing himself, essentially, by putting himself in this situation. Like, he never really grew as a character. Other people did. Other people had arcs. Even Chance had an arc. Chance, like, pretended to, or, like, didn't pretend. He claimed that he was friends with Bronus and friends with Warcraft up till, like, almost the end of the movie. And then he showed his true colors of being, like, a jerk. Like, he wasn't a good friend. He cared more about the fraternity than his actual friends. That was interesting. I think a better movie would have been if we followed Nick Jonas's character and he was the main character because it could have been the same storyline of, you know, Warcraft was jumped and had his car stolen, but it could have been from the perspective of his brother who was like, you know, my, my blood brother has been hurt and now he's pledging to this fraternity and getting more hurt. Because in the beginning, Bronus was just a bro. And then he progressed into being a brother. That's powerful. I think that would have made a lot more sense. So, acting-wise, I would say it was, it was really good. Um, shot-wise, you know, it, it's beautifully shot. It's very interesting. But I think a lot of times it was shocking for the sake of being shocking. Like, it didn't really progress the story. Like, when Bronis fornicated with the woman in the beginning, we didn't really need that. Like, there wasn't really a point to it besides just saying, Nick Jonas isn't a kid anymore. Here's his butt. At least I think you saw his butt. I might have dreamt that. But anyway, I can tell you my opinion but the only way you're ever going to really know how you feel is if you see it yourself. I would give it altogether a C minus because it was a complete story. The acting was good. It just didn't do anything for me and I didn't care about the main character and you want to care about the main character. Of course you do. So anyway, that's my review of Goat. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully I didn't confuse you a lot because Honestly, I confused myself a lot. Um, like I said before, I'm open to suggestions. If there's something you want to hear more about, if you want me to talk more about the actors, if you want me to talk more about the story, let me know in the comments. And yeah, that's it. I'll see you next time. Bye.